My name is Stanislaw Robert Liberta, and today we're going to be taking a look at the basics of editing in Final Cut Pro 10. So I've opened up Final Cut Pro 10 here, and I've imported some uh, some footage here and some audio in here. And if you don't know how to import any of this audio, I have another tutorial about getting up and running in Final Cut Pro 10. Make sure you go ahead and click that link, and you can go ahead and check that one out. So I've created my event, and I'm going to start reviewing my clips here. Now, you'll notice that my clips are taking up a lot of space here. There's these physical boxes. Do you see that here? So we've got this one, and then this one, and this one, etc. And as I'm scrolling over them, I'm still getting my image, but why do I have all these different boxes? And why do I have this jagged edge here? If I click on this clip here really quick, you'll notice that this whole clip highlights because this is all one whole clip, and it is 8 minutes and 38 seconds. I can see that right down here. It's giving me my information about my clip. Now, over on this right-hand side, you'll notice it says 30 seconds. It's saying how much time is being represented by each of these little film strips. So if I take this down to, let's say, 5 seconds, I'm going to have a lot more of these boxes. The reason being is that each one of these boxes represents 5 seconds. So this would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, etc. Now, if I just want to see the whole clip in its entirety, I can just drag to the other side. And here it's just showing me all. So this clip right here is only one second and three frames, while this one is five minutes and 55 seconds. So that's the difference. Now, I have another button right next to this here. And this lets me actually change the size of those clips in case I want to see more at once or less. And I want them to be a little bit larger. And then I also have show waveforms. Now, if this was audio or dialogue, uh, you know, I might want that so I can see exactly where that audio and dialogue is. Additionally, it lets me know when my audio is too hot. So in this example here, this was filming with my drone here. And if I play this back, it's going to be a lot louder. Maybe not on the screen here because I'm recording through here. But I can see that that's pretty loud and obnoxious. So... I will know right away, like, oh, I'm probably going to want to go ahead and drop those levels. So I usually leave my waveforms on personal preference to you. Let's go ahead and start putting some clips together. So I can review my clips pretty easily by just hover scrubbing over them. I'm just going to do, you know, some clips here, maybe a nice little 30 second vignette of something. And I can play this clip back. And as I'm playing back, I can hit my I key, which sets an in point right here in my media and then in I can hit my space bar and really drag to anywhere and hit my O key. Notice my space bar stopped right where I played and if I'm hovering over that I can stop right there and hit my O key. Now I've created a selection and what the selection lets me do is it says okay out of this whole clip I just want to grab this clip and notice I have this little hand here if I drag it down I can drag it right into my timeline and now if I play that back I can see it in my timeline. You know, it's true what they say. If you film early in the morning, stuff looks great. Now, what if I want to remove this or create a new in or out point? If I hover over it at any time, I can hit my I key. And any time that I hit my I key and it doesn't have an out point, it assumes that the last frame of the clip is the out point. So it saves me a step of having to go all the way to the end and hitting, oh, this is my whole selection. What if I just want to grab a few seconds worth? Well, if I click and I hold, you can see what it's doing here. It's giving me a little time indicator of exactly how much is coming through. So in my case right here, this is 11 seconds in 29 frames. I can let that go, and I can drop that into my timeline, and there we are. Underneath that, I've got these three buttons here. These are our main editing buttons. So let's go ahead and start from the right and see what these buttons do. So if I select my clip here, and I hit this button, well, that drops it right into my timeline. What if I grab another clip, and I'm just going to grab this in its entirety. It's 26 seconds long. I'm going to hit this button again. Well, it puts it at the end of my clip. Well, okay, I noticed that that moved over here. What if I take this here, and I'm going to snag this clip here and hit that button again? Well, that puts it again at the end of my timeline. So what exactly does this button do? Well, this button appends to the end of the timeline. It's a shortcut of key. And think about the way the actual E key is shaped. It's always at the very end of our timeline here. 
And the way that the E is shaped, obviously we have that line and then the tangs that come off of it. So I can click on any one of my clips here. I'll zoom that back out. And maybe on this clip, I'll just hit the letter E key. And now it dropped it right into my timeline. Now, what if I want it to be a cutaway? So for example, I'm going to remove these clips. I'm just going to take these two. I've just clicked and dragged and I'll hit delete and it just removed it here. And right about the middle here, right in this section here, I've just clicked here to put my timeline here, my playhead. And I want this much of this clip to go right in there. Well, in other editing programs, what I would do is I would just pop open my blade tool, which is B for blade, and I would just put that there and then use my arrow key and drag it over here and let it go. But notice that it doesn't work here in Final Cut. This is the magnetic timeline, and it is probably the most misunderstood thing about Final Cut because as other track editors, you might want to just take this clip, put it over here, because you know you're going to put it over here eventually, but it always keeps going over there. Well, I'm going to undo that. Go back to undo my cut here. And there we have it. And again, I want to put this clip right in there. So could I just drag this clip and put it in there? Well, no, that's not letting me do that. I've got another button here, which is my insert edit. So this is a shortcut of W. And what this does is it does blade it and then push it over. So now that clip has been sliced here. This clip has been interjected here from this section to this section. And then that clip continues on. So if I play that back, I can see what that is. All right, so there it is. I probably want to trim some of that back. Now I can see that as well. Now that brings up another really good point. These clips right now are way too long. How can I really shorten these easily. If I'm in my arrow tool, and I can see that that's right here, I can just click and drag back and forth. So I'm going to zoom in here so we can see that a little bit clearer on my screen. And if I'm at the beginning of my clip, notice I've got that little icon here. It's got a little head icon on it and this trim, and I can trim this back, and it's showing me how much I've trimmed down. So now this clip is 26 seconds. Now it is for uh, 8 seconds and 21. And I can do the same with this clip. I, I can actually trim this back or pull this out and trim it back from the other side. And I'm just going to trim this guy back here. Notice I can only go so far. So if I grab this first clip, notice it turns red. Well, the reason why it turns red is because there's physically no more media there. That's the end of that clip. So I'm just going to pull that back here. And I'll just tighten this up a little bit more. So each one's about two seconds here. And now my total duration is two seconds, 20, 25 frames. And I've cut off five seconds and 26 frames. That's what that's showing me there. Now, if I go ahead and play this back, that might look a little bit better. And my camera work is a little shaky there. I probably wouldn't use those specific points in those clips. But for our purposes, that's OK right now. Now, how long is my total duration of my timeline? Well, remember, if I clicked up here, it showed me the duration of whatever I have selected. So this clip right now is 7 seconds and 7 frames. This one is 36 seconds and 3 frames. Down here, if I click on any one of my items, I've got that bar down here. So right now, this is 6 seconds selected. But my total is 14 and 13 frames. So I click off that, and now it's showing me that this is 14, 13 frames in 1080p. Now, lastly, for our editing tools here, I'm just going to stretch this back out. We have two other things I want to talk about here. First is our trim tool. Notice this looks pretty darn similar to what we were just using before in our select tool. So if I actually was selecting something, right, you can see I'm trimming that back. But our trim tool lets us do our slip and slides or rolling edits. So you can see what that's doing here. And if I zoom out and I do a rolling edit, if you check out my canvas there, it's showing me the currently the last frame of the clip on the left and the first frame of the clip on the right. 
So I can see how that's changing back and forth there. So if I have some cutaways I want to do with the jump cut, I can get that really precisely. And if I'm hovering over a clip, notice I've got the slip edit here. So if I take this, I can now move through this. And again, it's showing me the first and the last frame that's playing back. So now I won't have that big shaky jitter as I had right before. I've altered the inner out point from the clip that I've picked. One last item here now is we have our connected clips. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to grab maybe this section of clip right here. I don't need 10 seconds worth, so I'm just going to actually zoom in. And now you can see why I might want to zoom in here. Just grab three seconds worth of footage. And I want this to be a kind of a cutaway. So if I drag this, notice it's got this connected line here, right? And so what that means is it's going to play. And once it gets to this point, our video is going to jump to that connected clip and then jump back down. One thing to be aware of with our connected clips is if I move this clip here, I can rearrange this, right? So if I'm going to put this here, notice all my clips rearrange, but my total duration does not change. If I grab this clip, this one moves along with it because it has this connection here. So I can actually move this and connect it to another clip. But now if I decide I don't want this clip, I'm going to delete it. It takes the connected clip along with it. So be aware of that. So that is the basics of editing and putting together some clips here. Another little bonus tip is if you do have audio that's a little loud, like I do in my situation here with, this, with my drone, I've got this little audio bar right here. See how it says zero decibels? And I can just pull that down to negative infinity. And now there's no audio there. Again, my name is Stanislaw Robert Liberta. If you're looking for more Final Cut tutorials or After Effects or Premiere, be sure to check out my website, stanislawrobertliberta.com.